this session on machine learning techniques in control theory and inverse problems. I'm Carlos Castro, one of the co-organizers of this uh, mini symposium. The other co-organizer is uh, Francisco Periao, that unfortunately uh, is not here, but uh, he is in the United States in a sabbatical year. So, but he is going to present one of the of the talks in this uh, in this session. So we are four people in this session. Uh, uh, the first one uh, is uh, Dominic, Dominic uh, Ruiz uh, Palet, which is from the Autonoma uh, University of Madrid. He is finishing his PhD, and he is going to talk about simultaneous control of neural ODs. So thank you very much, uh, Domenech, for accepting the, our invitation. Um, so please. Thank you very much, Carlos. So I'm Domenech Ruiz. I'm going to speak about uh, simultaneous control of uh, neural differential equations. So first of all, our setting will be uh, a ResNet architecture. So we have here like, the, the typical ResNet architecture. We have here an, an nonlinear an activation function. And uh, WA, uh, WA and B are, uh, are set to be parameters, and K is, are, are the layers. So in the, in, in the resonant architecture, you have this, this XK, which is a, an inertia term, that allows also to understand uh, this, uh, this uh, discrete dynamical system as a, as an, a differential equation. So as an, we, can, we can think that this uh, XK plus 1 minus XK is uh, a sort of uh, time discretization of a differential equation, and one may can write this uh, differential equation here. So, and uh, we are going to study the control properties of, uh, of, of, this, of, this, of this equation here. So, first of all, uh, what is uh, controllability? So, if we set uh, two, one initial data x0 and a target data xt, and the question is, does it exist a control function u such that the solution starting at x naught with the function u at the final time is xt. In, in our case, the controls will, will be the, the functions w, a, and b. Uh, but we can uh, also the, we'll study more the, what is the simultaneous control problem. And, and this is a much, more, uh, a much stronger uh, notion. So we might set two initial data and two targets that's, uh, and we, that's, that follow the same dynamical system with a con with a, and we are asking if there exists a u a common function u such that the the con the, the solution dry in, in, in that starts at x01 at the final time is xt1 and analogously for for, for x02 and and this as i said is a much stronger requirement and we can even i will put a, an example of uh, linear systems so here we have a linear system, uh, x dot equal ax plus bu, where I use the control. And uh, um, what uh, is uh, already, it's uh, very classic in control theory is to, uh, for any initial data and any, any target, the system is, is controllable if the following uh, condition is satisfied. Then if and only if condition, if the Kalman rank condition is satisfied, one computes this, uh, this matrix and computes its rank. And if this is equal to D, then the, System is controllable, and as an easy example, one, one we can we can set this uh, dynamical system here x uh, it, x prime equal to x plus u. This is as a single equation is is controllable uh, trivially, but uh, when we are considering many repetitions of it, we may, we, we can extend the system and to have this uh, linear system here in which we have the many copies here, but we are asking to be controlled with the same control function u. And uh, when one control, one computes the, the common rank condition, one realizes that is it basically a matrix full of ones. And the system then is far from being simultaneous controllable. So now uh, we are, uh, we we're now we want to understand some of the um, task in machine learning as a simultaneous control problems. So we might start for, with the classification, a classification problem. We have uh, here, we have set different bands on the, of the Euclidean space, this is R2, and we, we divide it in, in three sets, with this, these three bands, and we have a collection of labeled points. So we have uh, the, the blue points, the red, and the green. And we want to find the control functions and W, A, and B, such that they drive these points to their corresponding boxes. But they have to be the same for each one of them. 
So here, instead of having a precise target, we have and we have a set. So how uh, how well the, I'm gonna write a bit more. Well, we gonna explain a bit more the system. Here, we're, the the particularity is that this sigma we are considering to be the ReLU, which is zero when it's ne uh, in the negatives and it's linear in in the positive values. So and uh, with a, with ax plus b, one can also set a, a hyperplane. And, uh, and the control W also uh, allows us to orient the field. So setting, this is a, per, a particular choices. The, 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 the dynamics can be much, much richer, but in particular, we can set a hyperplane to that, uh, uh, such that at the uh, one side of the hyperplane, the field is zero. So the points that are there don't move. And at the other side, there is a, a vector field that can be oriented through the control W. And using using these flows, one uh, one one is able to 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 to, basic, to, to fulfill the, the the problem we were uh, to solve the problem we said before. If we're setting in a in a induction setting, so imagine that we have this: the reds, the greens, and the blues are well classified except one point. So the task would be now: how can we move this point to to its corresponding class? So uh, for for doing so, we will start. Fixing, uh, we'll start by um, by checking if, there is, if the condition is satisfied. If we have that all points have different first component, this is uh, just technical, but it can be guaranteed because since we have the, the, the two points are different, so we can find a hyperplane here and uh, and, and move and perturb a bit the points in on one side so that there isn't the, the, the points don't coincide anymore. So once we have uh, we have this. We can proceed sequentially, or we can proceed. And so this is the point that is misclassified and has to go to to this uh, to, to the to the to the one with the other blues. We can set a hyperplane a bit ab above and push all the points we have above this hyperplane to the left, so they are displaced uh, like this in in a way that this point uh, here, the, the point in, uh, blue that had to be has to be well classified is in the it's on the, on the right on, on all the others. And also, uh, since we are doing this horizontal translation, that we are not changing the classes of the points that we have moved before. And, and now we can also repeat the same process, setting a, a hyperplane a, a bit below, in a way that the, the point now is isolated and can be separated from the rest of the points. Now, just push, putting a, a hyperplane in the, in the right direction, we, might, we can control the, this point to the, to the specific target, to the, to the, the, the specific band. In a way, by induction, one can one can proceed on on having this uh, simultaneous control result. Uh, also, the the fact that we have a control in front of the nonlinearity um, may um, enables us to have this result for any time t, because by a simple ray scaling, one can absorb the time ray scaling by the in the control w, and uh, and the in, in the in this in this process can be done in arbitrary short time. Mm, so this is the, the result. So we can, when we have fixed these band, these bands here, we have you know, we have a collection of points there where, where the exiles are are different. This, this is important. We have we don't have to the, the same image. We don't we cannot we don't send the same image to the different levels. Uh, and we, we can find for any t we can find con control fu control functions such that at the time capital t they belong to their corresponding class. Okay, so some key particularities. One of the particularities is that the activation function is zero in one uh, in, in the half space, and this allowed us to almost move the points individually. And uh, the other uh, the other remark is that we that we need dimension bigger than two, but this is very particular of the of the OD setting because if we, if we have two points in, in, in dimension one which are ordered for any two any choice of controls, we will have that. The, the order is preserved. So, and um, and this is by the uniqueness of the ODE. Since the the, the ReLU is, is Lipschitz and all the nonlinearity is Lipschitz, we have uniqueness, and uh, this cannot be avoided. However, in uh, in the, in discretizations, ResNets might be able to to perform this in, in in dimension one, since they don't they don't have this uh, this constraint. Okay. So now we can also even think further. If can we really have a a simultaneous control of exact simultaneous control or an interpolation result. So can we can we can we do such that we, if we set spec, uh, ex, um, 
exact targets to the to, to each point that the, there exists common the same control functions that drive at each point to, to to their corresponding target. So first of all, as we said already, for the uniqueness of the ODs, these these targets have to be distinct because if they are the same by uniqueness, it's not possible. However, we might uh, we can also achieve this approximately by just modifying a bit to the the targets of I. So how can we do this? So this is uh, I will skim a bit the the idea. So this is. This can be done for any T and any collection of data, provided that, of, the, of course, the XIs are, are distinct. So the, the, the idea is to apply the, the same arguments and, 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 uh, and the, the, that we explained uh, um, before to, to order first the, the first component of the points. Here, the points are, uh, uh, let's say, blue, this uh, dark blue, this uh, strong red, and, the, and these bigger balls with a clear uh, color are their targets. So we can apply more of the, with a small adaptation the arguments above to, to control the first component of, uh, of these points. And now once they have controlled the first component, we, we can also uh, proceed sequentially and to put a hyperplane here to, to push all the, all the points to the right so that this point right is in, the, in their corresponding target. So we put the hyperplane above so that this point now is frozen and we proceed sequentially until all of them are in their target. Here in, here in these pictures, uh, there is, it's assumed that the targets have different uh, first component, but using a similar argument than before with, uh, with perturbation, they, it can also be done for even if the targets have the same, the, the same first component. Um, so now I'm going to move a bit to the universal approximation. So right now we are asking ourselves if, there, uh, if we set a function f in, in, a, in L2, can we can we make so, so, uh, that find controls the a, a w and b such that the solution at capital T is approximately the, the this function f? With uh, here the argument is the initial data. So uh, at the end, what, what we are asking is this. So instead of having now a, a finite collection of points, now we have x that belongs in uh, in the R, in, in, in uh, points in R two and any point in R two has to go to their target f of x. So uh, for for doing so, uh, we will approximate first f by, by simple by a simple function where alpha m is a, is a vector. So now here we have that all the points, for example, in these orange circles have a common target in a, in in R two. These in this green they have all they have to go to another target. Let's say zero zero, and these are in, with the blue they have to go to another target. Let's say zero one. However, here we already see one thing that uh, we cannot do. So since the ODE is uh, it's continuous with respect to the initial data, we cannot approximate a discontinuous function. So we have to think in a way to make it approximate. So for doing so, we will, we will basically do this. So we will choose the points that will be correctly well, the regions that will be correct, almost correctly allocated. And there will be some reminder that we will not uh, control their position. Well, we will only say that it's bounded in a in a certain uh, with a, for a certain constant. So essentially, we will, we will first generate a mesh made, made out of hyper rectangles. We will compress them, and then we will come back to the results I explained of simultaneous control. So basically, it's going from uh, an, a continuous uh, from, to having a, a continuous ensemble and to apply the discrete. Uh, uh, this quick simultaneous control I explained firstly. So what, uh, what we do is we cover the domain, the, the boundaries of these characteristic functions, and we generate a mesh out of, the, of this cover. So, and, and now these hyper rectangles, we will use the, flow, the, the flows to, uh, that, uh, that the, the make the hyperplanes are attractive and, and, and move them so that to, to, com to compress these points, to have a finite collection of points. And, uh, and, and to then control simultaneously them to their corresponding targets. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, so as we have explained in the, in, in the, first, uh, in the first slides, you, if we have, you have noticed that the, the number of steps de depend on the number of points we have. So also here, the, so, and this will be seen in the norms of the controls. Also here, it will happen that this will, the, the number, the, the, control, the norms of the control will also depend on the number of higher rectangles we have. And this is where we will see that uh, the, the set, if the sets, the, the, the characteristic function we're, we're trying to approximate is 
has a boundaries that are very complex, this will this will be seen in the bounds of the control norm. What you can see is that the, the norms can uh, can 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 carry, this, uh, carry the, the, the the box counting dimension of the boundaries of the characteristic sets. So if uh, the, if your boundaries of your character of the characteristic sets are very complex, this uh, is seen in this in, in these bounds. So finally, well, what uh, I will comment is when we have understood that we could uh, approximately control uh, this uh, this equation, some initial uh, some part of the initial data. So what uh, this what does this mean? So this. Uh, also, these are this can be seen as the uh, characteristics of a transport equation. So, and this is because the, the controls W, A, and B are uh, are the same for all for for each characteristic. So it means that since this is a simultaneous we will have a, a simultaneous control here, we will have uh, we, will, we will expect to have some results for this uh, transport equation where the here the, this still uh, here it's the is the, the the coming from the neural OD. So and. Uh, but the, the problem here is in which setting are we, do we can we inherit the, the results we have explained before? So, and this is the, the setting would be the, the, the Wasserstein distance. So uh, taking the Wasserstein distance can, can also be defined as taking uh, G as a Lipschitz with Lipschitz constant one, and we are basically computing this, this supremum here. So, but the question is why do we have to go to the Wasserstein distance or why this is the setting. So essentially the thing is that we have, we are working with the characteristics. We have worked in the phase, the phase plane. So we, we, we know who, we can compute distance in the phase, distances in the phase planes, but we in, if we are considering a transport equation and we are asking to have a control in some uh, LP norm, we see that the LP norm doesn't see the distances between the, between the supports. So this, the distance between this is one and also the distance between this is one. So, and, but with the, we, we had the, done the, the job in the, with the characteristics taking care of the distances in the Euclidean space. But in the, with the Wasserstein distance, we, we see that we can, now, we can see these distances. So we can, if, you can, if we set two, two, two Dirac's, the Wasserstein one distance between this, these two Dirac's is the distances between, the, between their supports. And this is why this is the setting to, to understand uh, the controllability of this transport equation. So the, the result is the following. If we set a target, which is a, is a, measure, it's a measure, which is a combination of Dirac's located in, the, in different uh, places in the Euclidean space with beta m, which is the weight that, that has to be positive. If, so the first thing is also that we, have, we are working in the, with the continuity equation, so the mass is preserved. So the, it means that the mass of the target data and the mass of the initial huh? data should be the same. So then, in that in that context, we can uh, we can have approximate controllability yeah. with respect to the oh, okay. time distance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so and the uh, idea is, uh, is to is, it also follows the the same uh, ideas than before. The only thing that we have to care about is to split the initial mass. So to split correct. So we have here the Dirac's. So what we have is to we need to to choose to choose precisely the points in which we were gonna cut our initial data, so that they correspond to the mass of their of their targets. Then compress every 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 part and send it to the to the, to the right location. This this will be done. This last step of the compression is the same than the simultaneous control result we have already explained. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna make a remark. On uh, momentum resonance, we have uh, I have been explaining a lot that since we have this uniqueness of the ODE, we cannot make two targets to be the same, and they cannot uh, because we cannot uh, make since the field is Lipschitz, they cannot coincide. So there is um, there are, there is recently this uh, this proposal of this uh, of this other architecture, in which they add a second derivative here. And this second term derivative can be understood as uh, some sort of memory. So if we do the time discretization of, uh, of this ODE, we see that from the second order, we need not only the time where we are now, time t, we also need the time before time t minus delta t, which is uh, essential to that for computing the, the next layer, we need the, two, the current and the previous ones. We need two, two layers more. Or also, you can, it can also be seen more if we, you saw, if you, if we can re-express this uh, this ODE as uh, in this setting, and here we see how the it depends on the all the all the past. So 
Now, uh, and what can uh, we, we do the, with this? So this, the uniqueness of the, of the ODE, uh, it's, also, it's also applied because the field is Lipschitz, but also now it's with the X, with, with the space and the velocity, which is denoted by P. So now we can have exact, con exact controllability. Uh, we on provide, uh, provided that we, in our targets, the, the velocities will be different. So that, and we are also free to choose these uh, final velocities. The, 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 uh, I'm, I'm not going to explain uh, the, the proof, but essentially it's, uh, it's very similar. So the only thing we have to know is to, is, is to basically care about the velocities and to, okay, well, we're going to proceed percent sequentially as before, but we are going to push each point to have a certain velocity so that when we are not acting to that point, it arrives at the time, uh, at the time capital T to their target. So this is essentially the, the, main, the main change. So, and, um, and this is uh, basically it. So thank you very much for, for everything. And if there is any, any question, I will be glad to answer. Thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, is there any question? Domenech, do you have simulation on this transport? Uh, uh, the uh, transport, no. I have other simulation, but I mean, here I don't have it, but... Uh, be very impressive. Uh, yeah, essentially, this is the, the transport is the same than to be, to be moving all the, all the points here, to, be, to, to see how this set is deformed and to, to see how, how one, one mass, mass goes to one place to another. But uh, I don't have exactly the, the, most, the closest thing of the simulations. I think uh, Enrique will have it, will show it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>